Welcome back to the slightly less sexy part of the lab, the data analysis. So let's open up this data file we saved before. So this is the very one we made in the previous video. It saves as a text file, which isn't particularly convenient for us. We can't do math on it, and the columns aren't even all that nicely formatted. So we would like to open it up in Excel. So we go to Open, and now we look for the file. So go to my USB drive. This is the folder. By default, it looks only for Excel files. If we turn this to All Files, it'll find it. So it's that one there. Now we get to this dialog box, and we have to tell it what format this file is in. So we want to go to something like Western European Windows, so it knows how to handle the special characters like the degree symbol. What we have is tab delimited data, so this all looks okay. And we have several types of data, so we'll just leave this as general. And here's our data. This is the note we made earlier about what this data was. I made a mistake and said it was liters per second, it's liters per minute. Now the next thing you might notice in the time column, this saves the last value first, and so it's from latest time to earliest time, and that's kind of opposite about how I would think about things. I would tend to list them first to last, so here's how you change the order of that. Highlight everything, go to data, go to sort. Our data has headers, and we want to sort by time, smallest to biggest. Now we've got the order correct, and a couple of things immediately jump out. We've got these columns with not a number in them. We've got this area column that has the wrong area. So remember, when we opened up the, the good software, it started recording immediately, and only later did we tell it we were using a plate type heat exchanger, so by default it was looking at this tubular heat exchanger which has the wrong area. Only after that did we tell it to calculate these values, so they don't have a number recorded for them, so I'm just going to delete all of this information, uh, or all of this time series data that doesn't have the complete data set. We don't have data in the column for T2 and T5 because those are only present for the tubular heat exchanger, so I've gotten rid of those. And now let's go and look at the lab manual and see in that data table what we're actually trying to get. So this data table says we want the time average values for each of our measured variables. So we'll create a, a new set of, uh, of columns here, and this is just going to be the average values for um, our volumetric flow rate on the hot water side, our volumetric flow rate on the cold water side, our hot water temperature coming in, hot water temperature going out, cold water temperature coming in, and finally cold water temperature going out. And these are the average values. So the function for finding the, the mean or the average is just called average. And now we'll just select values here in the column and this will take the average over the period of time we recorded. So drag that across, and now we calculated the average for all of our measured values. So for this run, we have everything that should go here into table 9 for a single data run. 
you might also want to take the averages of a couple of these calculated values, uh, in particular something like the overall heat, heat transfer coefficient, which is called Km here, and maybe the mean uh, heat transfer rate, which is this one here. And you might do that because over here in the lab manual, the first discussion question asks you to compare your calculated value to the values that the GUNT software was calculating for you. Now data table 10 tells us that we also need to find some property values for water. So the density, uh, the heat capacity, and with the density and the volumetric flow rate, then we can get the mass flow rate as well. So you have that data here at the back of the lab manual. You could do linear interpolations. You could try to read those values off the chart. It really doesn't matter. This isn't uh, about that. You could look at this program RefProp Mini. This is the program that I used to calculate the data given in the table in the lab manual. And so you can download this program, and for water, you can pretty much get all of the properties with the most current property model available. Alternately, you could uh, plot this and get Excel to fit a polynomial function to it, and then you would have these properties as functions of temperature. So that might be another easy way to approach this. Once you've done all that, the next thing to do uh, is to calculate the uncertainty in the derived values as a function of the measured values. Here in the LMS, there's a notebook file, so that's, uh, that's for Wolfram Mathematica. I don't have Mathematica on the computer I'm doing this screen capture on. I do have this as a PDF, however, so you're free to use this file to calculate your own uncertainties. The version you'll have has a few lines left incomplete, but it's just like this. So first the variables have all been uh, defined, and then the uncertainties, which is just based on what was in the lab manual. And then here's the part that you're going to have to complete. So uncertainty or uh, the derivative with respect to uh, heat transfer on the hot side will be there. You'll have to calculate the rest of these, but it's pretty simple if you just look at what that first line says for heat transfer rate on the hot side, the others all follow the same pattern, and you just change what you're taking the derivative of. Then you, you fill in your values for the properties, and then when you evaluate everything in the notebook, you'll get both a calculated value and the uncertainty in that calculated value, and that's not as a percentage, that has the actual units of the thing you calculated. Now, if you decided to do um, polynomial functions for your properties that gave them as a function of temperature, you could also choose to uh, put those functions in here, and then you would define them above where we defined our functions. But that would then let you take the uncertainty in the temperature and have it propagate through into uncertainty in these uh, values for water. I didn't do it that way. You don't have to do it that way. But that would actually be a more rigorous way to go about calculating the uncertainty. Hopefully that, that makes calculating the uncertainty in the derived values that go into that final data table uh, simpler for you and gives you some idea of how to do proper uh, uncertainty calculations or error propagation for systems that are complex and functions of, of multiple variables. All right, so thank you for watching and good luck.